If you're just joining us in this podcast, I want you to know that this episode is part of a series that I'm doing. This series is based off of a semester-long research study project that I did in the fall of 2020. And I'm going to give you all that research in this podcast series, but I'll also put footnotes in the description below of these videos, and I'm going to link the earlier videos on the screen right now. Okay, so in today's episode, we're going to talk about where critical race theory came from. Now, ideas do not just pop up in a vacuum. They come from somewhere, and as we talked about in the last episode, that everything that we do and everything we really believe is based off of philosophies. So we're going to kind of tie in critical race theory and show you where it came from and the philosophy that it's based off of. But before we do that, I have to give you um, kind of an insight into something that happened in the academic world just a couple years ago, so that that way we can kind of evaluate um, and better understand critical race theory. So in the academic world, just a few years ago, there was an experiment done by these three liberal-minded academic people. And I'm going to tell you what they did, and then once I explain uh, what their experiment was about, I'm going to tie it in and help you to understand why it matters for our study on critical race theory. Okay, so here's the three people. You have um, American philosopher Peter Boghossian, British author Helen Pluckrose, and American mathematician James Lindsay. Now, what they did was over the course of about uh, a year and a half to two years, they submitted multiple um, peer-reviewed research papers to academic journals. So this isn't like some sort of blog post or like a newspaper article that you write. This is something that takes a lot of time and effort to get actually published. And the categories by which they were writing these uh, academic papers were in the categories of cultural studies, queer studies, race studies, gender studies, sexuality studies, and fat studies. Out of these 20 papers, they actually had four published, three were accepted for publishing, six were rejected, and seven were still under review when the whole kind of hoax was found out. And the reason why I call it a hoax is because that's exactly what it was. They were trying to write these papers to show this is how ridiculous the academic world has become, that they've just lost their minds, that they would accept these sort of things as true research. So let me give you a title of one of the articles. It was Human Reactions to Rape Culture and Queer Performativity at Urban Dog Parks in Portland, Oregon. The point of that article is that feminism should train men like we train dogs. Now, they went so far as to say, like, hey, look, it's not politically correct to put men on leashes or to put shock collars on men. Wish we could, but we can't. So instead, what we'll do is we'll do all these other things that will metaphorically leash men so that way when they get out of line, we can yank their metaphorical leash or give them the metaphorical uh, shock to the shot collar sort of a thing. It's important because that's the same sort of camp. That's the same mindset that critical race theory comes from. And this isn't just me saying this, okay? So I'm going to give you uh, some quotes here in this podcast. And again, everything is going to be footnoted in the description below so you can go look it up. But uh, this guy, associate professor at John Hopkins University, pretty well-known uh, university, right? Yashka Monk says this. When he concludes about this hoax, he says, quote, it doesn't just expose the low standards of the journals that publish this kind of dreck, though it also demonstrates the extent to which many of them are willing to license discrimination if it serves ostensibly progressive goals. So essentially what um, Yashka Monk says is this, this hoax, what it exposed is completely complete utter biasness in that academic world where they have zero desire to really do good research. They just want to produce what they already feel like they want to believe. Now this, I've said all this at the beginning because what you have to understand about this uh, camp that I'm talking about is, is that it exalts social grievances over objective truth. That is so key if you are going to understand critical race theory. 
is that you have to understand that critical race theory does not stand by itself as an idea. It, if you want to talk about it, it has like uh, other siblings and cousins, and that is all these other uh, little academic studies that we were talking about earlier, they're all related because they all come from the same philosophy, and that's what we're about to get to here in the podcast. But before we do, you need to understand that this whole camp, this whole field of study, exalts social grievances over objective truth. So if something is a grievance to somebody, that's more true than what the actual facts say. In the end, it's feelings over facts. Now, Yashka Monk goes on to comment again uh, in the same article that he wrote. He writes this, quote, If certain fields of study cannot reliably differentiate between real scholarship and noxious bloviating, they become deeply suspect. You need to know that because just just because somebody publishes something, writes a book, writes an article, you know, gets on the news or anything like that, it doesn't mean that what they're saying is true. Because even in the academic world, you have people, not Christians, not preachers, not conservatives, but you have other academics who are even on the liberal side of things who are saying, this sort of research is nonsense, it's ridiculous, and it should be shameful. Okay, so you have to use your brain to not just um, listen to what is out there, but critique it yourself and look at the evidence. And that's all about what this podcast is about. And that's what I try to do in my semester long research about critical race theory. So now that we've talked about that, we're going to look at where critical race theory actually comes from. Okay, now America was founded on certain ideas. All right, and those ideas are freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of worship, um, and these are some of like the primary reasons why America has actually flourished as a nation and become the beacon of hope to the world. Well, all that sort of foundation was based on our founders and their philosophical understanding of the world, but their philosophical understanding of the world has now... Um, began to be rejected. And the whole foundation of what America is built on is starting to crumble because the new philosophy that America has bought into, which has spawned critical race theory, is postmodernism. Postmodernism really started to take a hold in America in the 1960s. And I'll prove that if you want to look at the footnotes in the description below. That's just not me saying it. That's what scholars say. But to talk about postmodernism, let me give you some quotes. So the senior editor of Encyclopedia Encyclopedia Britannica, Brian Dignan, says this, a late, that about postmodernism, he says, it is a late 20th century movement characterized by broad skepticism, subjectivism, or relativism. So remember how I said that uh, this whole camp exalts social grievances over objective truth. Now, if you're watching this podcast, chances are that you are going to be one who, you know, generally accepts that there is an objective world out there, and this objective world has objective truth to it. There are things that we can research, there's data that we can gather, and we can come to conclusions based off of that evidence and based off of that data So something as simple as 2 plus 2 equals 4, that's objectively true. It doesn't matter what you feel about it. It doesn't matter how many people say that 2 plus 2 equals 5. They're all wrong. 2 plus 2 equals 4. It's an objective truth. Postmodernism, on the other hand, which is the father philosophy of critical race theory along with all these other different uh, studies that we were talking about earlier, is a philosophy that is based on subjectivism which is exalting the feeling over objective truth. He goes on to say this, It is a general suspicion of reason and an acute sensitivity to the role of ideology in asserting and and maintaining political and economic power. Now we're going to kind of allude here to some future podcasts that I'm doing in this series, but notice here that he says that postmodernism has a suspicion of reason. What you're going to find out is what I call the hypocrisy of this view is that they use reason and logic to say that they should doubt reason and logic. That's what we call a contradiction. 
He also says it's an acute sensitivity to the role of ideology in asserting and maintaining political and economic power. Now, this is also something that we're going to talk about in in the future podcast episodes, is that critical race theory specifically views culture uh, and breaks it up between the oppressed and and the ones who are oppressive. So you have two groups, okay? You have the ones who oppress and the ones who are oppressed. And our political ideas and our social structures are formed in such a way not based on what is true and good and right, but more on power struggles and how to keep those down that we want to keep down and how to exalt those up who we want to exalt up into power. Now, Mr. Uh, Dignan goes on to say this, that the denial of objective truth that science and technology, even logic and reason, are not vehicles of progress, but instruments used to oppress. All right, so let's stop there. So you see what I'm talking about? What this postmodernism philosophy does, which is what critical race theory is based on, is it, it denies objective truth, and even science and technology, it's a, it, 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 it goes, no, 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 no. We question that. We don't, we don't uh, accept that because science and technology and logic and reason, these are just vehicles that culture uses to oppress people. So, it's, you know, it's so funny because our culture on one hand says that we, you know, everything that science tells us is true, but then you have another philosophy coming up that tells us, oh, don't trust science because science is just used by, you know, the culture in order to oppress people. So, first of all, which one is it? But then second of all, do you not see how they are denying that there's an objective reality and objective truth out there? Because now they're doubting whether you can even look at science and logic and reason and look at those things and say, hey, there's information we can gain from that on how to understand the world. They say, no, 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 no. All that does is, is used for power to oppress people. He goes on to say this, that it is human na- that human nature is a societal construct. You should see this in the culture now if you're not living under a rock, right? They say, hey, gender is just a social construct. I might be born a bio- biological male, but if I want to identify as a female and compete in female sports, then I should be allowed to, okay? Uh, next, he says, language does not refer to a reality outside of itself. We're going to talk about language in a future episode. And finally, general theories of history, our society, are illegitimate meta narratives. Now, that's super important as well, which we will do another podcast on later. Now, on this postmodernism, to give you another quote, professor of educational psychology and director of the Center of Qualitative Research at the University of Aarhus, Steiner Kavail says this. Postmodern thought is characterized by a loss of belief in an objective world and an incredulity towards meta narratives of legitimation. So he just basically said what I just told you, right? They reject an objective world and they don't accept the normal narrative of history. They want to rewrite history. He goes on to say, with a delegitimation of global systems of thought, there is no foundation to secure a universal and objective reality. So again, if there's no objective reality, everything is subjective, nothing is true. This is the hypocrisy of postmodernism and thus the hypocrisy of critical race theory itself. So let me read to you something that I wrote in my paper that I did for college. According to postmodernism, it is presumptuous to claim that there exists a single answer to truth that man must seek to discover, because they utterly reject the possibility of objective knowledge. Yet, with fanatical fervor, they militantly challenge social thinking in order to objectively convince us the only way forward is through doubt, subjectivism, deconstruction of categories, and a new meta-narrative. Postmodernism exhibits incredible composure by denying objective truth while claiming their view is objectively true without even cracking a smile. Now, if you're a Christian 
and you are um, reading into or looking into or maybe you even accept critical race theory, one of the things that I made very clear in my first podcast episode is this, and it's so important, I'm going to say it every episode if if I can, is that critical race theory does not have the corner market on social justice or on racial issues in this country. Christians have been fighting for social justice and on helping racial harmony for our entire history since we were founded, you know, back after Jesus rose from the dead, whether it was a Roman culture or American culture, all right? And you have to understand, if you are a Christian, let me make myself completely clear on this, that if you buy into critical race theory, you are buying into postmodernism. You don't get to choose critical race theory without the postmodernism thought. So if you buy into critical race theory and you accept postmodernism, you cannot preach Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, because that is objectively true. You are presenting Jesus as the objective way, the objective truth, and the objective life. You cannot do that if you also hold to postmodernism that rejects all objective truth. You need to see that contradiction as we go forward and look at the rest of why we should reject critical race theory, while we also should be fighting for social justice and for racial harmony in our country, which is only going to come through the gospel. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click like to this video, and also if you would, share it with some of your friends and other people who you know would be interested in this topic. Leave me some comments below, let me know what you think about the podcast or any questions that you have, and I will try to get back to you.